where he came out and said there's there's no longer a relationship between increasing the money supply and the value of that money, right? No longer a relationship between increasing the number of dollars and the value of those dollars. So just to, to jump into it, what's he talking about? And what's your take on that? Well, he's trying to say that in the past, right, printing a lot of money uh, would have been negative for the value of that money, would have yeah. been negative for the dollar. Which is obvious, yeah. Right. If he's saying that that's no longer the case, I mean, that is a ridiculous statement. I mean, maybe you could say that for the last several years, that hasn't been the case. But to say that it'll never be the case makes no sense whatsoever, because you're basically saying that the law of supply and demand has been suspended, that somehow it no longer matters. I mean, obviously, if the U.S. government mailed everybody a check for a million dollars, you know, we wouldn't all be millionaires. We couldn't all go out and buy, you know, expensive sports cars. I mean, there's just not enough of them to go around. The right. prices would have to go up. I mean, they can't make everybody a millionaire by giving them a million dollars. I mean, they could make them a millionaire, but you'll have to be a billionaire to buy things at that point because yeah. being a millionaire won't matter because everybody will be one. So to, to make a statement like hey, it's, it's unlimited. I mean, like we could just print as many as much money as we want and we're never going to destroy the value of the money that we're printing. The money that you're printing, when you're printing paper money, you're not mining gold. See, when you bring gold out of the ground, you are introducing a new resource into the economy. You're bringing gold, which has all sorts of uses, right? And, and so the world is wealthier because a resource has been harvested and now is available for use, right? Mm -hmm. But when you print money, we don't have anything that we didn't have before the money was printed. So all money does is enable you to buy the goods and services that have already been produced. And if those goods and services aren't there, the money means nothing. doesn't matter how much you produce if there's nothing to buy. And you just can't keep printing money. You know, prices just have to go up. What we need is more goods, not more paper to buy the goods. And, and, and so his statement is just so asinine. And it reveals, you know, either a complete un misunderstanding or lack of understanding of basic economics. Or he's just lying and just figures that, well, you know, nobody's going to pick up on it. Right. He doesn't really believe it. He just doesn't want to admit uh, the problem that they're creating by printing all this money or get holders of U.S. dollars to start to worry more about the value of all the dollars they're holding on to. And, and not just foreigners, but Americans who may have dollars and that they're holding on to or saving that they're hoping to use to buy stuff in the future. Uh, if they understood the truth that those dollars may have no value in the future or very little value, they wouldn't hold them. They'd be getting rid of them right now, which is not what the Fed wants, because that would accelerate the crisis. So that's that's, I guess, where I struggle with this, because I have to assume that Powell does understand basic economics, right? Like, you I don't know. know. <laughs> I just don't know. <laughs> right. I mean, you know, no, man, that's a, I mean, he may not. I mean, you know, it's it's possible for sure. Anything's possible, you know, and, and you know, but I, I, I assume he's an intelligent individual, probably has his biases and his blind spots and his internal pressures that I'm not mm -hmm. privy to. But he's got to be a smart guy. Right. And that's my assumption. I could be wrong there. Right. Well, so, he, he could be smart in intelligence and IQ, but there are a lot of smart people that believe a lot of dumb things. So for sure, for intelligence sure. is not necessarily something that's going to keep you no, from you're making right. these mistakes. You're right. And I guess what I therefore wonder is how much of this is just to pacify sentiment. It's just to pacify the public, pacify the holders of dollars. Like, is that the core? Mo Do you think that's the core motivation? It's to keep everybody calm, to avoid the crisis mindset. Everything's going to be OK. It's just that just that narrative. Yeah, well, I think a large part of the Fed's job is public relations and spin sure. and to try to create a false sense of confidence in the U.S. economy, in the U.S. dollar. Before we continue, help us by smashing that YouTube like button and subscribe now to this channel. This shows the algorithm that you value the information and it helps us spread this message. Sharing is caring. Please like and subscribe now. Thank you. And now let's continue. I remember I watched an interview or listened to an interview uh, with Ben Bernanke and he was being interviewed, I think, by maybe it was Motley Fool or uh, some podcast or just Yahoo Finance. It was something. But he was no longer Fed chairman. And so the guy that interviewed Bernanke played for Bernanke clips of Ben Bernanke talking in 2005, 2006 
saying everything is great. There's nothing to worry about. We don't have a housing bubble. Oh, the subprime market is contained. We're not going to have a recession, right? All these assurances that he was making mm. that we shouldn't worry. Everything was fine, right? And he plays Bernanke these clips. And then he says, well, how does it make you feel, right, to have been so wrong, right? Because clearly, you know, I mean, it wasn't contained. There was a bubble. We had not only did we not avoid recession like you assured, but we had the worst recession since the Great Depression, right? So he's basically like, look, you couldn't have been more wrong. And here you were chairman of the Federal Reserve. You had all this information more than anybody else. Right? Now, he didn't say, hey, Peter Schiff was out there saying it's a housing bubble. We're going to have a financial crisis, right? He didn't bring me up. But he's basically saying, look, you had more information than everybody, yet you were so completely wrong. Like, mm. how, how do you feel like knowing you were so wrong? Right. And instead of saying, yeah, I really feel kind of dumb now that I look back. God, I, what was I thinking? I was so clueless. What Ben Bernanke said to basically save face, his answer was, well, you know, I couldn't exactly speak forthrightly or honestly. I can't remember if he said honestly, but I couldn't actually say, you know, what I actually thought because I was part of the administration, right? And so as I had to kind of tow the, uh, the official the party thing. line, yeah. and I'm thinking, what? Hmm. This is what he just said? Because the right. Fed is supposed to be independent. But what Powell basically said is, look, you shouldn't believe anything I was saying as Fed chairman. I mean, I, I mean uh, Bernanke, because I'm not going to tell you what I honestly think. I have to tell you what the administration wants you to hear, that everything is great. Mm -hmm. And so that's basically what he was saying. Look, the reason I got it wrong was because I wasn't trying to get it right. I was just trying to reassure everybody that everything was fine and there was nothing to worry about because I was part of the administration. So this is what this independent uh, central bank. And I'm surprised that these admissions didn't get, you know, any more reaction in the media. I mean, I'm the only one I've ever heard comment about, you know, such a statement. Right. But, I mean, he really, you know, let that out of the bag. And I think, yes, I think that these Fed guys, the Fed chairman, uh, they're just like, you know, people from, uh, you know, propaganda from the government. And and also, I think the Fed, they think that confidence is very important, right? They don't want to do anything to shake confidence. In fact, they want to try to instill confidence if they think confidence maybe is waning. Sure. And so they look at it as like, oh, we got to talk how great everything is, how great everything is. And even if they think that there's going to be a recession or a crisis or the dollar is going to crash, they're not going to say, gee, we think the dollar is going to crash. Because if they say that, well, then it's going to crash even sooner. Even if it wasn't going to crash, their, their, their statement warning of a crash could cause one. Sure. So I think they're very, very concerned. They don't want to accelerate the onset of the crisis they see by acknowledging that they see it. They want to postpone that as long as possible. And they think one way to postpone it is just to pretend it's not even a threat and get everybody to not con be concerned and then hope that maybe it works out better or that maybe they're wrong or we never, we never have a crisis. So I, I just never believe anything that they say at the Fed. I mean, I, I don't believe what politicians say either. And so I don't believe they're any, any debt. Different. And I don't believe that they're truly independent. I think, yes, they want to pretend they're independent, but that's part of the bluff to instill confidence in the dollar, right? That, oh, these independent central bankers, well, they would never allow inflation to get out of hand. They're going to raise rates. They're going to force the government to cut spending. They're going to force companies into bankruptcy. They're going to force real estate prices to crash. They're going to force stock prices to crash because they don't care about politics. Mm -hmm. They want to, you know, they want to preserve the dollar. No, I think they're, they're, they care as much about politics as the elected representatives who appoint them. What to do in such a situation? Inform yourself and keep your financial education strong. We from the Compact Group offer our loyal subscribers a free educational portal with firsthand monetary, financial, and economic knowledge. Enter our invite-only insider club by clicking the link below you will get access to first-class information far earlier than the rest. We have prepared a special deal for all our members where you can access a giant pool of Robert Kiyosaki's financial wisdom for just $1. To find out more, simply click the link below and join our Insider Club absolutely free. But there is more you can and should do. Build up several streams of income, 
More and more people realize that they have to take their future in their own hands, but they don't know how and where to start. We from Compact offer our Insider Club members unique opportunities. Strengthen your financial muscle and get the edge. Click the link below. Become part of our free Insider Club. No financial obligations. But there's one important thing you have to know. You have to become active. So do it now. Become active and see you on the other side.